Okay, now I'm going to set up an experiment so that we can measure the time constant of an RC system, or a first order circuit. Here I have a resistor and a capacitor that are in series with each other. This red wire right here is going to be our 5 volt supply. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a step input into the system by suddenly connecting this uh, wire, like a switch, to the 5 uh, volt supply. So at some instant in time, 5 volts is going to be applied across the entire circuit. And with my LabVIEW instrumentation right here, I'm going to uh, be measuring the voltage that's developed uh, across the entire circuit, which will be the step input, as well as the potential that's developed across the capacitor with respect to ground. So um, all of these are being measured with respect to ground, and um, as soon as I connect this, uh, this wire, we will have a step input into the system. So before I do that, I need to set up a uh, LabVIEW um, uh, excuse me, I need to set up a LabVIEW file or VI so that I can actually capture these measurements because they're going to occur faster than we're actually going to be able to record the data. Um, so we're going to need to be able to take the voltage measurements and put them directly to file. Okay, so the way that we do this is um, if we open up LabVIEW and start a new VI or new virtual instrument, uh, we're going to have two panels available to us. Uh, one is the front panel, so this is the instrument panel over here, the gray one. And on the left hand side is the block diagram, and this is where all of the programming occurs. Uh, if you don't see one of these windows, you can go to the window uh, in the uh, toolbar and um, click on show front panel or uh, show the block diagram if, if neither one is available. All right, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so that I can continuously measure uh, the voltage uh, that's developed at each of the uh, two points, the input voltage and the voltage across the capacitor. Um, the easiest way to do that is to right click so we get our function palette over in the block diagram and um, then go to the express menu and under the express menu um, there is uh, a sub menu called input and under that input menu there's the DAC assistant or data acquisition assistant so we're going to click that and put that into our um, into our block diagram and what's going to happen is it's uh, this is a sub virtual instrument uh, that's going to load up and it's going to allow us to set up our data acquisition card um, to take the measurements so this will take a minute or two to uh, pop up and then we have a um, some option boxes that we need to walk through. Right now we're going to acquire signals, so we're going to uh, expand the acquire signal box and then we are looking at analog input. We're looking at voltage measurements, so we're going to click on the voltage to set up the voltage measurements. It's going to then scan your system, so you need to make sure that the uh, the data acquisition card is plugged into your computer and powered um, so we need to make sure that um, everything is connected there and right now I have configured the measurements so that they're going to occur on channel 0 and channel 1 of our um, analog input card so I'm going to shift and select oops, sorry I'm gonna um, select analog channel 0 and do shift and also select uh, analog channel 1 so I can select both of those channels Okay, then I'm going to click Finish. And then the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to get a setup box uh, for the virtual instrument, all right, for the data acquisition assistant. I'm going to be uh, measuring small voltages, uh, less than 10 volts, so I'm going to change my signal input range here in setting. I'm going to set that to plus or minus 10 volts so that we can get a little bit better resolution on our voltage measurements. The terminal configuration should be differential for all of the channels. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that both of my channels are set up here. I'm going to click on voltage 0 and voltage 1, and I'm going to set them both up for plus and minus 10 volts. And make sure that they're both set to the differential terminal configuration. So what that means is we're going to measure the voltage with respect to the low side, which is, which is ground. Okay. Now that I've done that, I can come back to my voltage uh, measurements over here on the channel settings, and I'm going to rename these channels just so that I can, um, so that when I get my data, I know which one is which. So I'm going to um, right-click on voltage zero, 
and rename that and I'm going to call that um, I'm going to enter the new name here and call that the input because this is where our step input voltage is going to be measured and I'm going to do the same thing for voltage 1 and I'm going to rename that to um, the output because this is the voltage across the capacitor that we're trying to measure. The other thing that I need to do is I need to set my acquisition mode. So I'm going to uh, configure this to do continuous samples. So we always want to make data measurements. And I'm going to um, set this at the maximum rate that we can. And um, for this card in particular, I'm using a uh, data acquisition card, the 9219, which has a maximum sampling rate of uh, 100 hertz. Um, and then I'm going to set the samples to read. This is how often it's going to update my screen. I'm going to set my samples to read to about 10. So every tenth of a second, um, what it's going to do is it's going to take measurements at 100, uh, 100 samples per second. And every 10 data points, it's going to update the screen and update the data file. All right, so now that I've done that, what I can do is I can test this system out by going up to this um, the data acquisition assistant box and uh, doing the run continuously uh, button. And if I do that, it's going to initialize my data acquisition card, and it's telling me that there's some issue. Oh, sorry. Um, with this card, uh, there's an issue because um, the sampling rate is set to uh, 100 hertz, but uh, this device has two modes. It has a high resolution mode and a high speed mode, so I need to make sure for this card that I set it to high speed mode. Okay, so now that it's set to high speed mode, I went to the device tab and changed it to high speed mode for the ADC timing. Now I should be able to run this and it will run continuously and collect voltage measurements. Now, um, currently I don't have anything set up on the system uh, and I don't have power to it. If I apply power, um, I should see both of these channel measurements change and that verifies that my connections are correct and I have the right voltage uh, settings and everything is running correctly and if I disconnect it, I'm going to see some change there. All right, now that that's set up, I'm going to say OK and it's going to verify everything and it's going to, because we are uh, continuously sampling, what's going to happen is the pop-up box is going to come up and ask me if I want to incorporate a, um, a while loop into this. Um, and what that while loop does is it means it's going to take 100 samples and after it does that it's going to just loop back and keep on doing that sampling, uh, measure that measurement. So um, after it builds this initial virtual instrument, it says you, you have configured a task that requires you place the DAC assistant in a loop. Would you like to automatically create the loop now? And we're going to say yes. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this while loop so that I have some room to put some, some stuff in here inside this loop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the front panel. I'm going to right click to get my control panel or my control palette up. And what I want to do is I want to add a graph indicator. The graphs are under the Express menu. And um, after I look for the graph indicator, what I want to add is a chart. Uh, there's a difference in lab view between a chart and a graph. So um, what I want to do is I want to add a chart for this particular application. And it doesn't really matter where you place it. And I'm going to make it big, larger, so that we can see it. <clears throat> And uh, once that's done, if we come back over to our block diagram, we will see that we have a block now that represents our waveform chart that we just placed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that waveform chart into the while loop. And I want the data that I collect from my data acquisition assistant to be plotted on that waveform chart. So I'm going to uh, move my cursor over to the arrow beside the data acquisition assistant and beside the little box that says data. When you do that, you should see the box start flashing. And we should also see the cursor change to the thing that looks like a wire spool. When you do that, click on the um, click on the cursor and then um, left click and drag it over to the waveform chart and once it's there um, click on the waveform chart and we should see that uh, we have created this blue line 
um, that's going to take the data and plot it onto the chart. The other thing that I want to do is I want to save this data to a file. So um, over in my block diagram, I'm also going to right click. I'm going to go to the express menu again. And in this express menu, I'm going to uh, go to the output submenu. In the output submenu, there should be a, uh, another virtual instrument called write to measurement file. So I'm going to click on that and place that inside of the loop. Now a setup box is going to come up and ask me some questions about what I want to do. So the first thing is the file name. This is the location that the data is going to be saved. So I'm going to change my location uh, to a fo folder that I've set up on the desktop. All right, And I'm going to create a file name that I want. The first file name I'll just call it um, rctest1. Okay, And it's going to save this as a .lvm file. All right, so that's where the data is going to be located after we run the program. All right, I'm going to save uh, under my actions. I want to make sure that I save to one file. Do not select right now, ask user to choose file, because we're just setting up a very quick instrument, a quick and dirty experiment. So um, if we want to develop a, a nicer user interface, we can select this. But this causes some problems with the continuous sampling mode. So we're going to have to uh, work that out um, if you want to actually uh, have a pop-up box that comes up and asks you where you want to save the file. Um, if the file name already exists, let's select use the next available file name. Um, and then uh, what I want to do is make sure that save to a series of files is not clicked. Um, under my file format, leave it as a text file or LVM file. Under segment headers, I'm collecting um, data at a rate of 100 hertz, and I'm saving that data um, in chunks of 10 data points. So what I want to do, that's called a segment. Um, what I want to do is I want all of the data to be lumped together, and I do not want breaks in my data. So uh, one header per segment means that I'm going to write uh, some setup information, tell me, uh, tell me about the name of the file and the sampling rate and the channel names, and then I'm going to write 10 points of data and then keep doing that. Um, but I really just want one header, so I'm going to make sure the one header only is selected. And then uh, under the X value, the X value is going to be our time column, so I want to make sure that I have one time column only selected. The delimiter for this is this is what separates the columns of data. You can either choose tab or comma, Excel, or uh, any other data analysis package will accept either. Um, I'm just going to leave it as the tab delimited or tabulator delimited. I'm going to say OK. It's going to set that up. And now what I want to do is I want to take the data that's coming out of the Data Acquisition Assistant and put it into the Write to Measurement file as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this blue line that connects the data output from the Data Acquisition Assistant to the waveform chart. And once that starts blinking and I get the wire spool again, I'm going to click and connect that wire also to the signals input of the Write to Measurement file. So with this now, we have everything set up, and we should be ready to make our measurement. So now I'm going to go back to the front panel. I'm going to expand my chart just a bit here. All right. And what I want to do is I'm going to, going to click the Run button. As soon as I click the Run button, it's going to start taking data and saving data to file. And right after I do that, I'm going to then connect my... Um, connect the uh, step input, or I'm going to uh, connect the voltage across the system to the 5 volt source, and we should see the change that occurs. While it's doing that, it's going to be recording the data to file so that we can look at it later. So I'm going to run, and I see that I have a, um, my chart is auto-scaling, so I have a lot of noise uh, right about zero. And then I'm going to connect it to 5 volts. We see the step input, and then we see the red line represents the voltage across the resistor excuse me, across the capacitor. All right, I'm going to stop that, and now we have seen the response of the um, of this system to the step input. What we're going to do now is we're going to, in the next video, take this data, and we're going to do some analysis on it.